Welcome to EC114, Introduction to Quantitative Economics at the University of Essex. This is the first of five labs that will give you a brief introduction to STATA13, the software you'll be using for statistical analysis. In this lab, we're going to give a brief overview of what are the main functionalities of the software, mainly how to create or set up a working directory and how to import data sets into the STATA data matrix and then how to write some code for basic summary statistics for the information stored in those data sets. This is how Stata looks like on a Macintosh machine. It has three main windows uh, that we're going to be looking at and that we care about. This is the output window. Anything that we write into Stata or any command we give Stata or any task we ask Stata to do it will produce an output on this window that we'll be looking at. Here on the left we have the variables window. Usually data sets store information column-wise and the title of the columns are the variable names that we're going to be using and those names will appear here on the left and we can easily click on these variables and uh, look at some of the information and this um, window over here is the command window where we can write different commands and send into Stata. However, we're not going to be using the command window because all of our code is going to be written on a do file, a do file editor which we can save and use up later. If you're working on a Windows machine, Stata may look slightly different, but the functionalities are the same. So this is how Stata looks like on a Windows machine. It has essentially the same um, windows. I was just hiding some of them on my on my state of 13. This is the output window where we receive all the the results of all the tasks that we ask Stata to perform. On the right, we have the variables window. Down here, we have a window called properties that display some of the properties of these variables that we have stored in the data matrix, but we don't really care about this now. And on the left we have a review of the commands that we're using, which we don't need because we're storing all our code in the do file editor. You can open a do file editor on a Windows machine by clicking on this icon over here. Same on the Macintosh. You click on the icon with the pencil and you open a do file editor. In this editor we're going to write up all the code that we need to perform whatever analysis in Stata. The advantages of a do file editor is that we can simply save the do file and share this do file with other people that will be able to reproduce our analysis or we can also store information for ourselves in the future when we want to repeat a particular part of our analysis. We don't have to write up the code again. So we won't be using the command window to insert anything. All the code will be inserted over here. Two other um, buttons are important um, on the main window, the data editor and the data browser, which are um, essentially window or, uh, platforms that will give you access to the data matrix. You can edit information on the data matrix, so you can actually insert information on the edit version. The browse version only allows you to look at what variables you have in memory and some of the properties of those variables. So first and foremost, we're going to learn how to um, create, set up a working directory that is telling Stata to load all the files and store all the information in a particular folder. So we're going to open a do file we have created for this lab. All the materials for this lab are given in the description of this video. So you can click on the link and download a zip folder with all the materials. So this is how a do file looks like. This is the main structure that we should give do files. The first bit of the do file gives information about the name of the do file, date, the author, the purpose, input files used, and output files produced um, for that session so that you have an idea of what, the, what is the purpose of this do file. It can happen that during your analysis you will produce several do files for different purposes so it's good to keep track of the work you're doing. We give 
we are able to give the state a written comments that is information that we're writing down only to explain to ourselves or to whoever is reading our do file what is a do file doing and we're able to do that by using the simple trick forward slash asterisk asterisk for uh, a slash whatever you write in between this this combination of signs is read by stata as a comment so not as a command that will produce a particular output so every time we you see stuff in green that means this is a comment not a particular command that is going to produce an output in stata and we use this to comment on the work we're doing in the do file so the first thing we want to do is to set up the working directory that is to tell state of what is the folder where we have our file stored and where we wish to store the information we produce this is done using the cd command cd stands for change directory and after the command we give between quotation marks the file path or the file path where the file is stored essentially the folder where the files are stored um, in this case is ec114 stata labs in my dropbox folder how you get to this path essentially there are several ways to do it if you're working on a macintosh you can just come to the folder where we have your file stored you can right click on one of the file press get info and you get the location of the file so you can essentially then copy this and paste after the cd command if you're working on a windows machine you can do the do the essentially the same procedure right click on a file click on properties and on properties you have the location path as well so you only have to copy this and paste after the cd command in stata alternatively you can also click on this bar over here and when you click on it left click you essentially get the location of the folder where the, the file is stored so in our case we're going to create the working directory and after we create the working directory Stata knows where to store all the files we create and where to extract files and import files from after that we're going to open the log file the log file stores all the information that we produce all the output that is given in this window here so we can look at it later and analyze the results later first we close any log file that is open and we use the log command to open a new log file called lab1 underscore log it's going to be a text file we tell state it's a text file and we're going to replace any file that is in memory if there is a file with the same name we're going to replace its content with what we produce today so when we run this command, so we run the command by pressing Control shift d if you're working on a Windows machine you'll press Control d at the same time, so you select the command and you press Command shift d and it sh um, sends this line of code into Stata so here we have the output result for the log command so it tells us we have a log file that is going to be stored in this folder it's a text file and it was open on this date so in order to look at the first commands that we have to browse the data and look at the information we have stored let us first import some data into our matrix so we have this excel file which is essentially a subset of the British household panel survey with very few variables just to keep all the work we do tractable and we're going to load this file into Stata now we can load it directly as an Excel file or we can save it as a CSV file which stands for a comma separated value or as a TXT file a tab 
the limited file. So here we have the data set. It has six variables, the identification of the respondent in the BHPS survey, gender, age, number of hours worked, wage per hour, and the education level. So we have three variables that are numerical, four with the identification, and we have two variables that are string variables. They're variables that only have characters in them that state that is not recognized as numbers. So let's first save this file as a CSV file. Very often you will find information on the web that is going to be interest for your analysis stored as comma separate values. So it's important that we know how to bring this type of data into or data structures into Stata. So we've stored it as a CSV file and we can also store it as a TXT file. If you scroll down you'll find tab delimited text and we'll save it as a TXT file as well. So we have our two files in the folder the comma separated values and the txt file and we're going to use the insheet command to bring these files into our data matrix so we have one variable created here when I imputed those numbers so we're going to have to clear this information so we're going to use the insheet command which the syntax is very simple if you want to look at the, how the syntax work you can type in help in sheet you can essentially do this with any command you use and when you run this you get a help file which tells you what is the syntax for this command and gives you a couple of examples at the end on how to use it so you may find that interesting the syntax is simple in sheet using between quotation marks we give the name and the extension of our file and we give two options here the first option names tells Stata that the first row is going to give us the variable names and the option clear clears any information we have in memory so it was going to, it's going to clear this var1 we have over here so here we have our data set in memory here we have the variables we imported PID, sex, age, number of hours worked, wage per hour, and education. We can look at the data matrix by clicking on the data browser. So as we can see, the numerical variables are colored black, and the string variables are colored in red. So Stata cannot read this information for any numerical purposes. It can still create tables of frequencies, but it cannot read the information any other way. If we want to bring in the data set from a TXT file, the command is essentially the same except that we change the extension and we tell stated in the option after the comma, we tell stated that the file is tab delimited. Essentially comma delimited means that each row is separated, each value is separated with a comma and the tab delimited means that each value is separated with a tab and Stata needs to know how to organize that data structure into different columns and rows so if we run this command again there's no change we bring in again the six variables and 2124 observations we had in our Excel file if we want to bring the data directly from Excel we can also do that using the import command and the syntax is simple import excel the name of the file bhpsmall.xls with the extension and in the options the option for the import command is slightly different is first row instead instead of names but the outcome is the same first row tells stated that the first row of the data set is the variable names so it should not be read as data but as the variable names. 
and if we run this we bring again the information that we had before unlike the other two unlike the ingit commands we don't get information on number of observations but we can get that simply by typing in display underscore capital N if we run this this data tells us the number of observations we have in the data set now important commands to browse the data are the describe command summarize and browse. Browse essentially opens the browse window instead of having to click on the icon. The describe command tells us the variable names, storage, so the type of variables that we have, format, and labels, and some information on number of observations, number of variables. And the summarize command gives us summary statistics for all of these variables or the ones state is able to identify as numerical or read as numerical and that is the case for respondent identification number, age, number of hours worked and wage per hour. Now we're interested in labeling these variables because the labels here are essentially the name of the variables and they're not very helpful so we can give meaningful labels so we know what variables we're dealing with using the label command syntax is simple label var the name of the variable and between quotation marks the label we want to attribute to this variable if we run this with command shift d we can look at the label label of the variable over here we can describe the variable and we know it's storing information on the number of hours worked for each respondent and we can do the same for all the other variables BAS rate, wage per hour in pounds, age of respondent and ID of respondent. Finally we'll save the data set as a DTA file a state of file so that we don't have to again import the information and so that all the information we have given state in terms of labeling the variables is stored as well so we don't have to do this again this is done with the save command save bhps small dot ta comma replace in the case the data set already exists we're going to overwrite the information with this data set this is a tricky option it's it may be a little bit dangerous if you don't give different names to your data sets you may essentially erase information that you had before that was important so be careful with the replace commands that you don't lose information that is important to you the file has been saved and if we want to open the file we can use the use command use and between quotation marks we give the name of the file and the extension and we bring the file again into memory and all the information we gave on the label of each variable is stored now we close our log file and we we'll save the do file so that we can open the do file and add either more coding or just repeat the analysis in the future. In the description of this video you have all the materials that we have used including this do file and I will also put a link to a longer version of this introductory video if you want to look at other capabilities of Stata. Thank you.